Hey, hey, quilters, how are you this week? It's beautiful weather outside, it's really good. I kinda tried to curl my hair a little bit today. Can't say as I know what I'm doing, but we're gonna work with it. I wanted to talk to you today about stitch length. I've had some questions on it kinda come through my inbox and I realized that I wrote a blog post about it a while back, but I have not done a video on it. So let's talk a little bit about stitch length, okay? If you are new here to my channel, my name is Kristen. I have a blog and a website at icstarsquilting.com as well as a channel here on YouTube. I share tips, tricks, and tutorials for the modern quilter. Anything that makes your life easier, anything, little hacks that I can figure out and I can then pass on to you to get more of what you love to do into your day. That's what I'm about, okay? So today is stitch length. You have so many buttons and fancy things on your sewing machine, it's overwhelming. I don't know what all these buttons do. My machine is fancier than me, or you know, maybe you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and you're like, what are all these buttons? I'm ready to dive into it and I'm ready to find it out. So stitch length, is what it comes down to is how fast and how far the fabric is moving by the time your needle is going up and down. So it may move a lot by the time your needle comes back down or it may only move just a tiny bit while your needle is coming up and down. That is what your stitch length is, okay? And this is what it looks like based on the different stitch length numbers on your machine, okay? Those are measurements. They're not just random numbers. They're actual measurements that your machine is doing while the feed dogs are taking your fabric through your machine. Now that you know what stitch length is, let's talk about how you know what to use, okay? How you know which number to choose. You know, you can play around with it and find what you think looks good, but if it isn't working for the project that you're doing, that's when you need to kind of ask for some expert advice, right? And that may have led you here. The closer that your stitches are, the shorter amount that your fabric is going to move through your machine. I kind of have some favorite numbers that I like to use when I am doing either top stitching or I am quilting. I tend to use a 3.0. That's just kind of my go-to, okay? And I like the larger stitch that it gives me. It creates a little bit more of a forgiving nature on a quilt when you are quilting with a 3.0 because it gives the fabric and the, all of the sandwiches. It gives all of your quilt layers, it gives a little bit more freedom for all of your quilt sandwich layers to move as it goes through the wash or it goes through just the everyday rigors of life, okay? So I like to use a little bit larger stitch when I am top stitching or I am quilting. When it comes to piecing, I like to use like a uh, 2.0 to a 2.2, okay? Something that is much smaller because I don't want the top of my quilt, my quilt top, coming undone by the time I get to sew all the pieces together. Like for instance, if you're doing half square triangles, right? You sew all those together and then you come back and you lay them all out and then you sew all those together. You don't want them com coming unraveled by the time that you get to it. If you use a much larger stitch, you'll find that that, that uh, thread is gonna come out or it may like kind of lift up on the edges or whatever. So I like to use a much tighter stitch there. Plus it keeps the quilt top itself much tighter and less likely that it will fall apart on you. When it comes to paper piecing, I have an even different stitch. I like to use a 1.8 when it comes to paper piecing um, simply because it's perforating the paper as you're paper piecing, right? And the larger the stitch is in that, the more paper you're going to have to rip through. So I like to use a really nice tight little stitch in there so that I know that that paper will easily pull off and I won't have to work super hard to get it off. So those are the stitches links that I like to use and the reasons why I like to use them. You can kind of play around on your machine. Um, as you get into the decorative stitches, those are decorative. So it's gonna be more of a personal preference on what you want the end result to look like. When it comes to just like foundational stitches, what you're using to hold your fabric together, I would stick closer to what you want the end result to be. If you want it to be nice and big and loose and allow the fabric to have freedom to move, then you're gonna go with the bigger stitches. If you want the fabric to stay put exactly where you want it, um, you can go with the smaller stitches. I will tell you, the bigger stitches, they zoom, okay? They go really fast through your machine. The smaller stitches take a little bit longer time, but your 
your goal is different in that, if that makes sense. You want it to stay together. You want the fabric nice and tight and woven together. So hopefully that answers some of your questions on like what stitch length do I use and why would I change my stitch length and how in the world am I supposed to pick a stitch length when I don't even know what the stitch length means. So hopefully that helps answer your questions today. You know, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask away. I'm here. Do me a favor, please, and subscribe to my channel. If you hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell afterwards, it'll send you an update every time that I post a new video so that you don't miss any content. And I've got so much good stuff to share this year. I'm really looking forward to getting out there and getting more tips and tricks your way than ever before. It's been wonderful and I cannot wait to share some of the stuff that I've learned with you this year. My name is Kristen with icstarsquilting.com and I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.